This problem is a little bit more complicated than problems we've seen before because of the complicated figure that's given with an arc and a straight line as well as the large problem statement. It takes some time to sort through the description to figure out what you actually need to know, what's important, and what you're looking for. So finally, we're looking for acceleration normal if point P, and that's this point that's on the line here. And we're looking for the tangential acceleration of point P. And we're given information about the velocity at the final position and the initial position and looking for that acceleration normal and tangential at the middle position. We know the direction of this a, which is vertical, and that tells us that the acceleration given at point A is the vertical acceleration, I mean velocity, vertical velocity, acceleration there is constant. We'll have to find that later, but we know that that acceleration vertical is constant. We're also given information about the position through angles and this radius R. Now let's take an overview of what the problem path will end up being. We're given the initial velocity of A, and we can assume that that's the same as the initial velocity of point P. And both of those are at rest. We're also given the final velocity of A, and be sure that you mark that that's in the Y direction, because that is also the final velocity of P in the Y direction. And this value of velocity isn't really helpful at this point, because we're wanting to analyze it at middle. So you can immediately know that you'll have to convert there and you'll convert it through acceleration. Acceleration of point P in the Y direction. Once again, make sure that you mark that as Y acceleration. And this is the acceleration that they determine is constant. Once you find that acceleration using the linear equations that we've derived before, you'll then calculate the velocity of point P in the middle in Y. Now, when we're looking at the dynamic system of N and P, N and T, this y velocity doesn't help at all. But because we know the direction of the velocity, which is going to be exactly tangential to the arc, you can convert this to just the general velocity without y. And that's going to be the magnitude of that velocity, and you know it's very particular direction. So once we've gone that, that's um, very straightforward in terms of the equations that we've calculated before. But then we'll get back to this new section of normal and tangential acceleration. And to do that, you'll use this velocity to calculate a, t, and a, n. And these are the equations that we derived in the last video, where a, n equals 1 over r, v squared, and a, t equals the second derivative. So we'll calculate that. At this point, hopefully you have a better understanding of what the problem is. Maybe you don't, maybe you want to keep watching, but see if you can pause the video and look at how I've organized it here and solve these equations for yourself. But if not, let's keep going. I have already solved for the position information and, well, I've solved for it using the figures and then I'll write the equations out. But we care about the difference from the position in the y direction of p naught and pm, and we also care about the difference between p naught and p final. And we'll use these to get that y velocity from point p naught and to final, and converting that to the change in velocity from point p y from zero to middle. So let's calculate from 0 to m first. The change from 0 to m, that will equal the 250, which is the radius, cosine 20, and that's going to be this distance, minus 250 cosine 50. And that is this distance, because when you add 20 and 30 together, you'll get this is 50 degrees. And subtracting that and solving for it, you'll get 74.2 millimeters. Likewise, to solve for delta H from zero to final, you'll find the 250 of uh, cosine 20.
and that is going to be 235 millimeters. And we'll use these in the next equations. Now let us go from Vy P naught to the acceleration of the Y. Okay. We've derived equations like this before, and it's the V squared minus V naught squared plus 2AY delta H from zero to final. And don't forget that this equation, this acceleration value exists here because there is an acceleration. If acceleration were equal to zero, then this portion of the equation wouldn't exist. Obviously, because it would be multiplied, but just remember that when you're reading a problem statement, when it says constant acceleration, it means that there's an acceleration there. Most likely, you can have a V of X equation, or in this case, it'll be V of Y. Okay, so 175 squared, which is that final velocity, plus zero, plus a y to 35. And that makes a y equal to 65.2 millimeters per second squared. Now to go from a y to velocity middle, we'll do the exact same thing, but putting the unknown for the middle velocity at the beginning instead of the given final velocity. This is delta m from zero to m. And when you solve for, well, let's put in the variables there first. Plus two, 65.2 times 74.2. And when you solve for that, it is 98.4 millimeters per second. And now we have information at the point that we care about, but it's not yet in the form that we need. If this was point P middle, we just defined this as V middle, and we found this V middle Y. And here we know that AN is on the inside and AT is on the outside. Let's convert this to the velocity here. We know that the angle is 40 degrees because of geometry. If you were to take your whole triangle and put this in as 50 degrees, this would be 40 degrees here. Then when you move it over, the 40 degrees is here. So we can convert that V middle Y to just V middle. V middle Y equals Vm cosine of 40. So when you solve for Vm, you'll get Vmy over cosine 40. And when that is 98.4 over cosine of 40, you get the value 128.4 millimeters per second. And that is Vm. All right. We now have the velocity and the direction that we need and the magnitude that we need. Cut off this equation in your mind and now exclude it from the figure that was given at the beginning. You are now looking at it in terms of just acceleration normal and acceleration tangential, and this is point P. If you're looking at it like this, it simplifies it down a lot. You've already done all the work to get here. Now just solve for A normal and A tangential without trying to think about what's actually happening in the context of the figure. Later on, when you get more comfortable with these, you can do that as well. But when you're learning at the beginning, it's really nice to categorize the parts of the problem that you're working on so you don't overload your mind. I know that sounds kind of silly, but it also keeps you from getting overly tired while you, while you work problems. All right. So AN equals V middle squared over rho, which is the 250. So 128.4 squared over 250. That is AN equals 66.0 millimeters per second squared. And AT, we can calculate either doing the derivation like we've done before, but we don't exactly have enough information about that to do it. 
so what we can decide is that you know that AT plus the cosine of 40, which is here, plus AN of sine 40, which is here. Both of those are in the y direction, both of these values. And this is equal to the y acceleration given before, a of y. You can calculate and infer what, that's not supposed to be there, this a of t is using these values. So a second ago when I said take it out of the problem, don't forget the variables that you have. You know acceleration is in the vertical, but you don't necessarily need to think of it in context of the equation. So remember what is known about this point, but don't try and fit it into some kind of particular thought in your mind. Okay. So A of N. We solve for that. Now let's solve for A of T. A T cosine of 40 plus 66.0 sine of 40 plus 65.2. When you solve for that, you get A T of 29.7 millimeters per second squared. And now we have calculated for both the normal and tangential. Now let's go back to the problem statement and review what we just did. Okay, we are given instructions to find the normal and tangential at a very particular middle point. We're given all of the information about position, but we're only given the vertical y component of acceleration and velocity. We do have to find acceleration, but given that it's constant and we know the velocity information, it's really easy to find acceleration there. So once we find the vertical acceleration of this point P, we can then convert it to the component that is the dynamic system that's going along with the point. And that is the tangential that is parallel to the velocity and the normal that is perpendicular to velocity. Once again, let me know if you have any questions. Um, put in the comments those questions and I'll answer them as quickly as I can.